All right, well, hello, welcome. I'm Dr. Michael Turner. I'm a physical medicine and rehabilitation specialist and um, look forward to this module today. This is exciting. I wanna talk about foundational principles of exercise, okay? Um, I've always been athletic, you know, always had an interest in exercise and fitness and that's how I really got towards my medical field itself. And so I've been blessed and excited to learn more things, you know, along the way through medical school, through working with patients over the years. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the concept of being in shape, right? We know that feeling, you know, being out of shape and being in shape. And I remember, you know, one of the best times I was in shape, I was doing a lot of lap swimming. Actually, in college, I took a swim conditioning class, they called it. And so the water polo coach would write these workouts up on this whiteboard, you know, and we'd just be swimming. You'd hit the wall. And you're just dying, right? You're just gasping for air, begging for air. It's like all of a sudden he blows the whistle. Oh, you got to go again. You know, I was like, this guy is killing us, right? But <laughs> at the end, I got in the best shape of my life, man. I felt great. I was playing basketball, running all over the place. Other guys were dragging, you know, hands on their knees nothing was bothering me at all you know so i just appreciated that feeling of, of really being in shape well that that concept of aerobic shape what does that mean you know physiologically what does that mean i want to talk about that for a second and mainly talk about how we can incorporate that ourselves and kind of recapture some of that feeling right so it's an interesting concept first of all it has to do with your heart right so it has to do with how uh, strongly your heart beats um, how efficient is your heart and your blood vessels at delivering uh, blood flow to whatever area of your body, right? If you cannot get enough blood flow, you can't get enough oxygen, you can't get enough glucose, you can't get enough fatty acids to create energy. So being in shape has to do with a strong heart, obviously. Secondarily, right tied in with that is the lungs. It has to do with having strong lungs, right? Um, you want uh, what they call vital capacity, which is how much can you breathe in and exhale um, in one breath? What's that amount? Um, you want a large vital capacity that kind of gets into strength of uh, intercostal muscles and other muscles around your chest wall. Um, but you want your lungs to be functioning well, obviously, to take in the oxygen and to get rid of the carbon dioxide um, as you're exercising. Um, another point, though, and this is often missed, is your cells themselves, right? The lungs can bring in oxygen, the heart can pump and deliver it. But when it gets to the cells, there's such a thing as the cell is in shape or the cell is not in shape. And this concept a lot of people don't understand. This has to do with the mitochondria and the efficiency of the mitochondria in our cells, right? So you may remember back to high school biology class, you have these little things in the middle of a cell that's almost like a cell within a cell that are called the mitochondria. And this is where all, most all of your energy creation happens. The metaphor that I use is like a wood burning stove, right? This is your wood burning stove. You take your carbohydrates and your fat, you put them in the mitochondria to burn for energy and you need oxygen to do that, no different than you need oxygen in your wood burning stove, right? This is where most of our energy gets created. Um, and what's interesting is if we ask the question, how many mitochondria does your cell have? Let's say a cell in your calf muscle, right? How many mitochondria are in there? The answer is it depends. It depends on whether you've been exercising that or not. It's variable, right? So you do the exercise, you give it a stimulus, your cell will literally reproduce much more mitochondria. It could go up two, three, four times as much. Or if we're sedentary, the cell starts breaking down and recycling some of those mitochondrial components and the mitochondrial density will decrease. Also, certain mitochondria become aging and less efficient. And when we're stimulated by exercise, we essentially recycle those and we regenerate fresh new mitochondria. So the number of mitochondria and their efficiency is extremely important at the cellular level. That gets into some other topics that we don't have time for in this module, but it gets into nutrition, it gets into supplements, and it gets into some other things, all under the question of how can I have my mitochondria as healthy as possible, okay? So, okay, mitochondria, just being real, definitely heard about it in biology, yeah. but it, like it's over my head. So um, why is that important? Uh, I mean, like it, it, I'm sure that it, it's important for like how we function as a yeah. person, but like how do I take care of it? And if you kind of break that down, is there any way to take care of it? Because it was interesting you said that um, that if you're you're actually exercising, there's more of it. So I don't know. Yes. I guess kind of like break down. Um, put in simpler terms like what mitochondria is and, and why it's important. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, let's start with why it's important, right? Okay. So let's start with um, any given organ you want. Let's say your heart itself, right? Any given organ in your body has a job to do that's important. To do that job, it needs energy. Where does it get the energy from? The mitochondria, that's the answer. So if your heart has plenty of mitochondria that are at a high efficient functioning, it will have more energy it will be able to beat more strongly, it will do its job. Let's just talk about brain. I mean, you need tons of energy for all the neurons in your brain, right? They're sending electrical signals here and there. I mean, by definition, that's energy. You can imagine like these high voltage wires zipping everywhere in your brain, right? Mm -hmm. 
So where does the energy come from to do that? The mitochondria. How many mitochondria are in your brain cells? As many as you've trained to be there. <laughs> you know, how efficiently do they work? as efficiently as you've told your body that they need to be. The other concept here then is remodeling. I like that word, remodeling, right? Okay. Um, so, you know, we all know about remodeling on the level of, oh, if I do some arm exercises, my arm muscle will get stronger. Fair enough. But if you do some cardiovascular exercises, your mitochondria will uh, reproduce or um, be recycled and new, fresh, strong ones will be created. So your cell is very sensitive and responsive to what you tell it to do and the amount of mitochondria is very much under your control based on your stimulus of exercise. So the big takeaway here is that it's important to be active, it's important to be exercising because this mitochondria flourishes more when you're exercising and it helps your overall wellness physically and mentally. Hugely, yes. Okay. Just, just to put a sort of an exclamation point on that concept, yeah. right? So one of the measures of how in shape you are is something called VO2 max. If you're into exercise, you've heard of your VO2 max, right? And you can look this up. This basically has to do, V stands for volume, O stands for oxygen, or O2 rather, and then max stands for maximal capacity. So what's the volume, what's the max volume of oxygen that can fluctuate in and out of your body in a certain period of time, right? This has to do with how efficiently you breathe, how efficiently oxygen is delivered, and how efficiently your cells use it. That VO2 max is a measure of how in shape you are from a aerobic perspective, okay? Your championship Olympic swimmer, cyclist, and all that stuff, their VO2 max would be quite high. Well, here's what's interesting. What if I told you that VO2 max was also associated with lower deaths from cancer, right? Interesting. Yeah. What, you know, what if I told you that your VO2 max was associated with lower heart, death from heart disease? Okay, cool, kind of makes sense. We're strengthening mm -hmm. our heart, right? What if I just said, let's just take all causes of death, cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's, I mean, falling off a cliff, depression, suicide, whatever, you add up all causes of death. What if I told you that VO2 max is strongly associated with all causes of death? The higher the VO2 max, the lower the risk of what we call all cause mortality. That's okay. crazy. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. And again, that's because that tells you that, you know, no matter what organ system we're talking about, it needs to create energy, right? So if my liver's failing, if I had a strong energy capability within my liver based on mitochondria, right? It could do its job better, right? If it's my lungs, if my heart, if my pancreas, whatever part of our body. So that VO2 max is telling us about the health of our mitochondria, the health of our cells, and therefore whatever given organ system, its ability to be healthy and do its job. Okay, so yeah. just what, what I'm hearing from you is there is a direct correlation between your health and your activity like it's just important to be yes. out there doing something indeed okay indeed and just to to further that point for a second and also to kind of like reduce the barriers you know sometimes we think oh my gosh you know i don't have time to go to the gym for an hour you know uh i've got kids you know i've got two jobs right i got an achy back i mean i can't afford a gym membership i can understand it i want to again kind of blow your mind a little bit and open your mind up to something here right so what if you could do four minutes of exercise in a day Four minutes is all, and actually increase your VO2 max. Okay. I do it for sure. Right, so kind of astounding. It's been proven, scientifically proven, many, many times over now that with just four minutes of exercise a day, your VO2 max will increase. And this was actually pretty revolutionary when it came out. It first came out in the late 90s. There was a paper by a Japanese researcher named Tabata, T-A-B-A-T-A, -A -A, and it's worthwhile to look that up. But he started a revolution of what we would call high intensity interval training. People have heard about that, right? Interval training. This is the concept. He basically showed that in two groups of people, one group over here, these were like fairly high level um, athletes in the Japanese Olympic system. Okay. This group um, uh, rode a stationary bike at 70% of their VO2 max for an hour. This group over here did four minutes of exercise, which was 20 seconds burst, 10 seconds rest, so that's the 30 second cycle. And then they repeated that for four minutes. So there were eight rounds of work, okay? Mm -hmm. So that 20 seconds was all out effort on the cycle, okay? They're not talking, they're like sweating, you know, they're almost standing up on the cycle and just giving it all that they've got for those 20 seconds. Then they rest for 10 seconds, okay? Well, what was phenomenal is over here on the hour cycling group, their VO2 max increased, fair enough. Over here on the four minutes, <laughs> burst cycling group their vo2 max also increased and it increased the same amount okay the same amount as this group saying hey not only can i keep my vo2 max up but i can actually increase it proportionally in as doing one hour as doing four minutes so quite a revolution but the concept is that that exercise in four minutes has to be intense that burst of 20 seconds has to be some all-out effort